the Secretary of State in Ohio, John Houston, did not pull the trigger. Everything was in place. It was going to look exactly like 2004, an unprecedented, miraculous comeback on Romney's machines and through this strange crashing of the Secretary of State's office. But the fix was next. So much focus on Ohio, and yet the one part of the story what we're not talking about, maybe the biggest part of the story, Ohio's voting machines. Already there are major concerns that the electronic voting machines here, as well as an electronic software patch that's been placed on voting machines in the northern part of the state by Secretary of State John Husted, could cause all kinds of problems. According to the Free Press, Election Systems and Solutions, ESNS, they installed software patches that will affect 4,041,000 registered voters, including those in metropolitan Columbus and Cleveland. By unilaterally deeming this new software experimental, Secretary of State Houston was able to have the software installed without any review, inspection, or certification by anyone. Again, that according to the Free Press. It's a very big story here. These software patches are only the beginning, though, of the questions surrounding Ohio's voting machines. One of the most surprising revelations is how closely Governor Mitt Romney is connected to the machines being used right here in Hamilton County. Last week, we investigated whether or not those machines could actually be hacked, whether the votes could be manipulated. Here's a look at that reality check. There was a tremendous amount of information leading up to uh, the election. Uh, and in fact, one of the um, Wall Street sites on investment news uh, said that the number two and number four story uh, that might swing the election, the top ten October surprises. Uh, the second one was the free press story that I wrote with Jerry Bellow regarding Mitt Romney's major funders having bought uh, a computer uh, voting machine, Hard Inner Civic, uh, a month prior to him announcing uh, for the presidency. A lot of people seized on the story and tried to deny it uh, because uh, we showed financial links to Mitt Romney's family, Solomare, uh which describes itself as a partner, a partner with Hig Capital. And Hig Capital controls, again, Hard Inner Civics, the voting machine company, as a wholly owned subsidiary. Now, uh, because we pointed out that Solomare was a partner with Hig and there was a direct tie to the Romney family. People attacked us, but in fact, they're financial partners. Uh, you can only imagine if Obama was financial partners uh, with a company that owned a voting machine company. Uh, the Republicans would have screamed the high heaven. Generally, the Democrats kiss ass. They pucker up and kiss ass. That, that's what they do. I mean, uh, because they're afraid if the truth gets out, the people will be depressed. Now, the people are liberated by facts and truth. And uh, I don't do this because I'm working for uh, the Democrats. And uh, uh, I disagree with them. I'm, I'm a green. Uh, I don't like the empire. I don't like the violations of civil rights. I don't like bailing out the banks. I'm a green. I'm not a Democrat. Nor uh, am I working for the Republicans by trying to depress Democratic voters. What I'm trying to do is point out the same facts that were verified here by Business Insider. I know what you're going to say. Bob, you're in a conspiracy. Forbes and Business Insider. It's not a conspiracy. It's called fact-based journalism. So, Harvey, what happened in Ohio? <laughs> Well, the big news is what didn't happen in Ohio. Uh, what didn't happen in Ohio was that the uh, team Rove uh, and the Republicans did not steal this election, even though they had uh, geared up to do it very, very clearly. I mean, we watched uh, John Houston, the Secretary of State here, operate pretty much the way Ken Blackwell did in uh, 2004. They greased the skids to uh, prevent people from voting. Massive disenfranchisement. The only reason the vote in Ohio was even close was because one of the most vicious, brutal 
uh, Jim Crow campaigns in the history of this nation. And uh, rest assured that the software was in place to steal the vote. Uh, but also what was in place were the FBI, uh, their cyber squad, federal monitors, and think about what actually happened on election day. Uh, I filed suit uh, first in federal court and in uh, state court uh, against these illegal software patches. Uh, and what happened, uh, Cliff Arnebeck, uh, who was arguing in court, uh, pointed out that these were intended to flip the vote. We will prove, and I have put Mr. Tagalinis on notice, we are in, going to be filing a racketeering uh, action against Mr. Rove and his accomplices. And as soon as we are in a position to do so, we are, we are going to uh, bring this matter under the power of Ohio racketeering statute, the most powerful such state statute in the country. This is serious business. We have begun the process in both state and federal court. The cases continue to pend. So for example, if ES&S and the Secretary of State use this malicious software to flip the vote and that becomes determinative of the presidential election, uh, we're in a position, we've got to, we're in two courts where we're addressing this issue. If this is the cause, you know, we're, we're in a position to address this issue, say that the, um, this is the cause and that we, there, should, there needs to be a recount, a manual recount of the paper ballots. And uh, we have a, we're in court and the judge said come back and uh, if, that, if you get to that stage and you want to request that the state and the uh, ESNS pay for that recount, I'm here. He accepted the affidavit of Michael uh, Dunahoo, who is one of the top cybersecurity experts in the world, uh, one of the only 50 people who have been certified uh, for a certain classification of uh, cybersecurity sophistication at the National Security Agency where he worked for some, some 37 years. So it was a very positive day as far as I'm concerned. We cried wolf when there really was a wolf. And, and so, you know, people faced him down this time on the disenfranchisement issue. The reason that so many voters got through the disenfranchisement campaign is that they were forewarned and they were angry and persistent. They certainly disenfranchised plenty of people, but people stuck it out. People knew what was happening this time. Forewarned was forearmed. The media actually covered the story. And, and uh, you know, we, uh, fi I find that very gratifying. For the most part, we were just angry. For the three days before the election, um, the Secretary of State had tried to block that uh, time out and take the, the voting time away, uh, shorten the hours, do whatever he could in his position to affect the vote and to uh, suppress the vote. And uh, I talked to people each of those days and it was uh, a general consensus of opinion that people were just angry and they wanted to get out and vote and show the uh, Secretary of State as well as the um, opposing party that their tactics weren't working. We were at the driving park location today um, on the east side of Columbus off of Livingston Avenue and um, upon arriving around 7 o'clock in the morning we noticed that a lot of people uh, were being um, steered from the regular tables over to the provisional ballot tables. So, so that was a red flag uh, for us. Um, throughout the day, we estimate about 20% of the voters were voting with provisional ballots. What's but wrong with voting provision? The issue with provisional ballots is number one, that they're not counted until November 17th. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's upsetting is there were quite a, pe uh, quite a bit of uh, people that left because they had to get to work or they had other things to do and they couldn't stay and deal with the long lines on the provisional ballot table. So we don't know how many of those people never made it back. Yeah, o overall, we just think it's ridiculous that it's in that this day and vote. age, you know, um, you got to jump through all these hoops just to make, uh, make your voice heard, make your vote count. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. And we understand that, um, you know, it's, it's planned. I mean, there are some people who just don't want 
a certain group or certain groups of people to be able to vote to be able to vote and uh, you know have their voice heard one of the big differences uh, this time too is the green party was pretty powerful in this election they were at 85 in front on the ballot for 85 percent of the electorate she was a very credible candidate jill stein did a wonderful job very attractive and very um she's a physician i mean she was uh, uh, uh and also the only woman which I think was very important, actually, this time. And uh, so she couldn't have done a better job. And to have the Green Party out there and organized and credible and carrying, um, carrying a certain weight, talking about this, really made a big difference. When you voted in the wrong place, you deserve to have your vote counted. Word is getting out because people are still being thrown under the bus. And you know what? Election. Unless it's unless it's a green win, those problems aren't going away because neither of the corporate candidates have an exit strategy from any of these crises: the student debt crisis, the crisis in the cost of education, the homelessness crisis, the, the mortgage crisis, the offshoring of our jobs. There's not a single solution that they're offering. They say they be patient. Well enough of being patient you know it's time to stand up and get the justice we deserve the clock is ticking it's time to stand up now people will keep coming in because they will keep finding out that in fact there is no solution within those corporate sponsored parties we are the ones we've been waiting for so let's go to it one person one vote not one dollar one vote, which is the way it's been going. So yeah, let's hear it for one person, one vote. She was very clear on, and she was with us at our press conference in DC. This is a uh, conference <clears throat> on the uh, integrity uh, and or lack thereof uh, of the uh, election that will be conducted nationally tomorrow, although it's been ongoing through early voting all over the country for uh, quite a while now, and we're actually getting early voting results, which may or may not be accurately reflecting the will of the American people. Um, our concern today is the integrity of the ballot in the upcoming election, especially the electronic ballot. My name is Harvey Wasserman. I'm the senior editor of Columbus Free Press and freepress.org. We are responsible for breaking most of the major stories that came out of Ohio 2004 and the uh, theft of the election <coughs> that year. We are back here eight years later with even more concerns about the integrity of the ballot, especially of the electronic ballot. We are in the process as we speak of filing a federal lawsuit in Columbus, Ohio, uh, asking for the removal of some software that has been installed um, into the computer system. So we will go into greater detail, uh, computer vote counting systems, we'll go into greater detail as we proceed with this uh, press conference. We are very, very privileged to have some very important people with us today, uh, starting with Jill Stein, the uh, nominee for the presidency of the United States from the Green Party of the United States. Thanks so much to the press for coming out to hear about this uh, very important issue. A case is now being filed by Bob Fatrakis, a Green Party candidate for Congress in Ohio. Uh, and that case, uh, Harvey will provide you the details, but it focuses on the use of new software for um, uh, for the optical scanners, the ESNS machines, and this new software is untested and uncertified and in violation of federal and state election laws, uh, and it establishes uh, basically a, um, an open door to, uh, to fraud and should not be used in this election. We call for... Um, uh, an, an end to electronic voting, and in the meantime, for public scrutiny and transparency uh, in the use of any software so that the counting of our votes is not taking place by private companies in a secret process hidden from public view. This is a setup for fraud, if there ever was one. 
I'm going to ask you a straight out question. You went through this in 2000. Ohio. You almost went through it in 2004. Do you believe that Ohio has been settled? No, I don't. But look, I, I, I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but you should, it, we got to be careful about calling things when we have like 991 votes separating the 31,000 votes, Mr. Rove, not 991. Even if they have made it on the basis of, of select precincts, I'd be very cautious about intruding in this process. Well, folks, <laughs> uh, so maybe not so fast. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Same That's, thing that happened in 2000 and 2004 in uh, Florida and Ohio. Okay. Carl Rove is using the same playbook. Uh, just about at this same time, the Secretary of State's tabulating computers go down as it did in 2004. It goes down at the Ohio Secretary of State. Cuyahoga goes down. Funny numbers are coming out of Clark County. So they're gonna pull the trigger again here. And then what happened? Carl Rose melting down. The numbers aren't the numbers. He's got his story. There's 991 vote difference. You can see the reality on the screen that it's 30,000 vote difference but the mainframe computers come crashing, as they did in 2004. And in 2004, they sent it to a Republican firm, SmartTet, in Chattanooga, with a direct tie to Karl Rove's computer in the White House, GWB43. It was, it was the center of all the Republican campaigns, the voter vault, everyone that doesn't vote. And once the numbers come back after the Secretary of State computer crashed in 2004. Lo and behold, it's a miracle. Unforeseen Republicans race to the poll in those counties he named. Butler and Claremont uh, County and Delaware. That's what Rove was planning. Everything was in place. John Houston, for whatever reason, probably because federal monitors and FBI uh, cyber deck experts were crawling all over the state of Ohio uh, and reportedly at the Secretary of State's office. All of the major news, Forbes, and Computer World, and Banking Insider, uh, had all gone public with how bad this looks and how bad it would be for the United States to tamper with the vote. John Houston who had put this secret computer patch on. Secretary uh, the Secretary of State in Ohio, John Houston, did not pull the trigger. Everything was in place. It was going to look exactly like 2004, an unprecedented, miraculous comeback on Romney's machines and through this strange crashing of the Secretary of State's office. But the fix was nixed. 